Well, Holy Spirit said to I'm going to finish it all. I'm going to be talking about an abundant life today. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Bring it all. Bring it all, yeah. I mean, that's what he was talking about. Yeah, that's what he was talking about in the mother life. Yep. I mean, that little girl lives in the mother life. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you today, Lord. I thank you so much that it's not my ability, but it's you in me. I go on your ability. I go on you. I go on you. Promise me that if I open my mouth, you will fill it. And I trust you today, Lord, to do that very I believe that you want to share so much today with these people. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that there's a well. I thank you that there is a well of living water stored up in me. And I thank you, Father, that it just pours out of me. Your spirit flows out. And I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, like I said, I, I am uh, wanting to talk about an abundant life today. And I believe that so many times when we begin to think about an abundant life, we, amend, we immediately, we always just think, oh, about money. Yeah. Who, who, who in here didn't think about money when I said abundant life? Did anybody not think about money? No. That's the first thing we think about. But I promise you that we people who are sitting in this building today, as far as money is concerned, and you may be broker than a Billy Goat in a Sahara Desert, but because of where we live at right here, we're richer than, than most everybody else in the world. We're, we're, we live in such a great and abundance of life as far as money is concerned than, 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 than at least two-thirds of the rest of the world. Yeah. Am I coming through on this thing pretty good? It could be loud. Good? Is that better? Yeah. Better, 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 better. Okay. Anyway, uh, Yesterday, this dropped in my heart, and uh, I just heard an abundant life is the words that I heard, you know, and then, and, and, and uh, different things were bouncing through my mind. And I got up this morning, uh, about, I don't know, it was about 5.30, I woke up, and, and I went to working on this message, and, and uh, you know, John 10, 10 says, and this is amplified, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, But I come that they may have and enjoy life and have it abundance, have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. He said, and this is verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd risks and lays down his own life for the sheep. Aubrey just said it. He is the good daddy of Leah. I'm trying to break this down into what we can understand here. I mean, that was so good. The Holy Spirit just set it all up for me. He's the good daddy. He'll lay his life down for that little girl. Because he's the good daddy. He's the good shepherd. He shepherds that family. I'm the good daddy. I'll yeah. shepherd my family. I would lay my life down for her. I would lay my, down my life for that granddaughter back there. Yeah. 
Are you hearing me? If we could ever get a hold of who we serve, yeah. who is our daddy, yeah. we would begin to trust him better. Yeah. We would we would quit threatening. We would quit fretting whenever we get in a little bit of a jam. Yeah. See, his word says that he's the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for him. He just said. Anything that's His is a last. Yeah. How many of you know? Who do we belong to? The Lord. Once we gave Him our life, He took it. Yeah. That's all He wants us to do is give it to Him. Yeah. Once we give it to Him, trust Him. Amen. Quit fretting over things. Amen. Trust Him. Amen? Amen. And you know, he God says in his word, he tells us exactly what abundant life is in his word in several different areas. But but I went I mean this is just immediately this morning, this passage of scripture came to me thinking about that. Psalms twenty three. So let's open over there to Psalms twenty three. Psalm 23, 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, the Amplified says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Now, sometimes we get to think that we're lacking in things, you know. We get to running low on our finances. We get to running low on the groceries in the house. And we get to thinking we're lacking, and we're not. Because like I said, if you live in this country, and you got a little bit of unction to you, and you serve the God, that is more than enough. Amen. And all you got to do is get out there and find it. It's there. Amen. We, are, we live in one of the most flourishing countries in the world. Amen? Amen. And we shouldn't be lacking for anything. Because we serve a God that's more than enough. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Aubrey is as Alea's daddy. She should she shall not want for anything. Will she Aubrey? That's right. Amen. She won't want for anything. He's gonna see to that. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. He's gonna see to that. The Lord, his word, this is his word. We have his word. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We need to learn to take God in His Word. Amen. We're not trusting God with His Word, people. We read this, we read this Word, and it's like pouring water on the duck's back. It rolls right off of us and we don't believe it. We believe the lie of the devil rather than believe in God's Word. Uh -huh. See, His Word says in 1 Peter 2.24, He Himself bore my sins in His body on the tree. By His stripes I have been healed. Yeah. Oh, but I'm sick. My body says I'm sick. See, you're going by what the devil's saying. Yeah. Come on. You're going by what the, the God's Word says you've been healed. And when your body goes to screaming that you say you're sick, you say, no, that's a lie. Yeah. That's a lie. Yeah, it's people. People may laugh at you, but that's a, the truth. Is you're not sick because God works says, by your by His stripes I have been healed. Yeah. And so you need to start saying that out your mouth, and it will change what's happening to you. Yeah. Amen. Verse two. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Listen to that. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. There's comfort. Yeah. He comforts me. The Lord is my comforter. 
He, he leads me beside still waters. That's a gives me a picture of peace. Yeah. He's our peace. Yeah. Are y'all seeing the abundant life in this scripture here? Yeah. That's the life that Jesus came to give us. Amen. We need to quit getting hung up on money all the time and look at what He really did for us. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying this, I'm not preaching this against having money. You know, so many people will go to go to talking about this and they go to preaching against prosperity. I am not against prosperity. I've been poor and I've had a lot of money and I like a lot of money better. Amen. I ain't against having a lot of money. But I believe up until now, the reason I ain't never had a lot is because the money would have had me, but it ain't that way no more. Amen. I done learned something. Money ain't nothing but a tool. Amen. And the more I get, the more I can give. Amen. And that's what God wants me to do. He told Abraham, he said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. See, we've never got a hold of that. Oh, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. No, I want to bless you so you will be a blessing. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Get our eyes off of us. Right. That's right. We got our eyes on us all the time. We need to get our eyes off of us and go to looking at people that we can bless, yeah. that we can be a blessing to. Well, I ain't got nothing to give nobody. Well, if you just start trying to give something, God will give you something. Right. Yeah. His word says He gives seed to the sower. Yeah. If you ain't sowing, He ain't going to give you no seed. Right. Come on. Yeah. If you ain't sowing, He ain't going to give you no seed. Why? Why? Why would He want to give you any seed? You ain't going to do nothing with it. Come on. Eat it. That's it. See, He's wanting you to go out there and sow. Sow the Word. Sow giving. Sow giving in money. Sow giving, sow giving in food. Sow giving in, in uh, 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 clothes. Sow giving in, in kindness. Sow giving in giving a, a kind word to somebody. There's opportunities of sowing in every area of your life. You know, y'all heard me share this before, how when you're driving down the road, you see somebody waiting to get out. And everybody's running bumper to bumper. You ain't getting in front of me. Come on. I, I do that. I get in line now, and, and, and I see somebody trying to get out. And I'm sitting there going, can't wait until I get there so I can let them out. Because I want to plant that seed, because it's going to come up in my life. Yeah. And so many times, I see it work for me. Yeah. I'm going, man, I, I'm, I'm sitting there with a 40-foot trailer behind me. How in the world am I ever going to get out of this traffic? And I, threw, I go to take off, and I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, the traffic is... I get unloaded, and I get my truck, pull up, and I pull up to the, to the, to the stop, and somebody will stop letting me out. Praise God. It happens all the time. But it's because I plant them kind of seed. Yeah. That's just one example. Amen. Amen. But if you don't plant nothing, if you don't plant nothing, you're never going to reap no harvest. Right. If you don't plant something, you ain't going to reap no harvest. It works in finances. It works in, in, in any area of your life. Amen. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. For Thou art with me, Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. That shadow of death, that valley of the shadow of death is where we're at right now. That's what we're walking through this world. This world has the shadow of death on it. Yeah. But we don't have to fear no evil. Right. Are you hearing? Yeah. yeah. We can walk through this life and not fear no evil. Why? Because He's the Good Shepherd. We've yeah. given our life to Him. We're His. Right. See, she's His. She has to fear nothing. Right. And I know I've seen her. She fears nothing. 
I get worried sometimes with it. You go to wandering around, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I remember a few years back when we was up there at the, the river doing them deals, you know, and I'm like, where's the lady at? <laughs> I worried about her as much as he did. Maybe more. <laughs> you know? Because I, I just, but she didn't have no fear. Praise God she did. Yeah. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy. I'm talking about abundant life, y'all. This is spelling out the abundant life that we have. This, this, this scripture, this, this section, this chapter right here, tells us what abundant life is. Yes. If you've ever wondered what is it, this is it. Yeah. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. It's so many people, they will hear that and that thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. And they forget that it's saying in the presence of my enemies. And these religious people, they get to thinking that's in heaven. No, that's the marriage supper that's there in heaven. That's right. Right. Ain't no enemies. And there's no enemies there. Right. This table is prepared for us right here. Right. Yep. Right now. Right. Every one of our needs that we need, all we got to do is climb up to the table and, and, and partake of it. That's right. If it's help we need, climb up to the table and get you a bucket full of it. Amen. If you need prosperity, climb up to the table and get you a bucket full of it. Yeah. It's there for us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Amen. And then over here in, in uh, Psalms 34. And uh, verse 7 through 10. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Did you hear that? There's no want to them that fear him. Now listen to this next verse. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. Folks, this is God's Word for us. Yes, it's Old Testament, but it's still for us. It's for us. We can trust Him about this. Amen. See, we've let all this bypass us and we we, we, we're good. We, we got that John 10, 10 number uh, scripture in our head. And we, man, we quote it all the time. You know, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and more abundantly. And it just passes right over our head. And we don't really just, we don't, we, we don't even consider what all that is saying that we have. Because we're not taking God in His Word. We're believing the devil. If you go to worrying about things, you're believing lies from the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Worry is sin, and if you go to worrying about things, you're believing lies from the devil. See, Wednesday night, when my physical didn't come through, and I had to get that physical the next day, and I didn't know, I didn't know what was going to happen, and I fretted over that, and I slept about three hours that whole night. I was so wore out, so tired. Because I wasn't, I wasn't really worrying about it. I was just like, mm, it's just, you know. I said, I know God's got this, but when you don't know the outcome of something, other you begin, you know. Yeah, you, you, you know, and that's when the battle is there, because the devil's trying to get them doubts to come in your head. And he's trying to shoot you down, you know, trying to, if he can ever get in your head, 
You know, and that's where the battle is, is in your head. Yeah. You just got to say, no, devil. Psalms 91 is another another scripture that is is a such a prime example of, of a, our our abundant life. And I want to read that. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now right there, that scripture right there. I'm, glad, I'm, glad, I'm so glad you did. The Holy Spirit set this up so much. I mean, man, ain't God good? Yeah. I mean, He's so good. He just come up here, you know, and He just dropped that in there and it's such a, just fits Him of what I want to preach today. See, Alea abides under his shadow. Yeah. Amen. And uh, let's see, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Yomah. Yeah, she dwells, she dwells at their house and she abides, she abides under his shadow. Like I said before, if you mess with her, you're messing with him. Right. If you want to see the wrath of Aubrey, mess with that little girl. Huh, Aubrey? Yeah. I know that. Because that's the way I was and still am. If you want to see the wrath of, of Larry, you mess with her. Or you mess with that little granddaughter back there. Or even that, and you mess with Alea. <laughs> 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 Amen? Yeah. Or any of these other babies here. You know? Yeah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. See, we read this, but are we really trusting Him? Yeah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. And it rolls off of us like water off the duck's back. We're not really trusting Him because we go to fret and over things right away. Right. Something don't work out just the way we think it needs to work out when we go to fret and over. Right. Come on. Yeah. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noose of pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall I take trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night or the, for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. I'm talking about abundant life. Jesus gave us abundant life. He said, I have come to give us abundant life. Are y'all hearing what we got here? Amen. This is what Jesus come to give us. Amen? Amen. Everybody gets hung up on money. Oh, and we got more of it in this country than the rest of the world's got. And we think we're poor. Come on. We ain't poor, folks. If you've ever been to one of the third world countries, you'll see what poor is. Yeah. And I've been there. I've seen it. And it ain't here. Right. I mean, it may be in the inner city, but i tell you what. No. A lot of them that the reason the reason that they're poor in this country is because they ain't got the gumption to get up and do nothing. Yeah. Them people there, I mean, it's totally different. Yeah. You see them people over there, they ain't got hardly nothing. But what they got, they're doing what they can with it. Because yeah. there ain't no government to try to give them food. Right. There ain't no such thing as welfare. There ain't no such thing as food stamps. And they do what they can do. Yeah. I remember the time we went down to Honduras on that ship. Not Honduras, uh, uh, Casimir. Down in Mexico, we went on that cruise. I don't know if anybody, not probably nobody ever did, nobody else did notice it. They had this one guy, <coughs> and he, he was in a wheelchair. But he had rigged him up a little taxi-like deal with a motorcycle. And he would roll up in that thing in his in his wheelchair and he would ride up and down the street 
to, and, 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 and as a tax, you'd give people rides, wouldn't you? Make you even live. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He, he, he wasn't, he wasn't, oh, you know, they ain't down there. You know? There ain't no disability down there. There ain't no food stamps. Yeah. You know? A thousand shall fall at thy right hand, at the at a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. <clears throat> because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Y'all hear what I'm saying when I read this? I'm putting me in there. Yeah. I'm changing what I said because it's, it's saying thy and thee, but I'm putting me. I put. I make this personal. Yeah. And you need to make this personal when you read this. <clears throat> For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear me up with their hands, lest I should dash my foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample underfoot. And that dragon is the devil. Yeah. Yeah. We, can tra we can trample him underfoot. He's under our feet. And that's where he's supposed to stay. Amen? Yes. It says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Folks, we have God's word that that we need to get a hold of and trust and rely on and believe him. And it will change, it will change the way, it will change our life. But so many of us, instead of Instead of quoting God's word when an issue comes up, we're looking at a problem and we begin to talk about the problem. We begin to build the problem up and we begin to call it in first news, you know, it was a little mobile mobile and now it's become a mountain. Yeah. And that mountain's getting bigger and bigger because we keep talking about it, talking to God about it. Oh God. This and this and this is going on. Oh God, this and this and this. I need you to move this mountain. You know, His Word says, say to the mountain and the mountain will move if you believe in your heart and do not doubt. Come on. Let's turn over to Mark 11, 23. Well, let's read uh, verse 22. And Jesus answered and saith unto them, Have faith in God. Because he's talking about Peter. Just Peter just said, he said, well, let me, let me just back up a little bit. In the morning, at verse 20, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter called to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is, is withered away. And Jesus answered and saith unto him, and you know, so many times we read this here and we think that Jesus, you know, just turns on to look, guys, have faith in God. But see, these guys had been with Jesus for three years now. 
They had seen him do all kind of miracles. They had seen all kind of things. And they were they were surprised because when he spoke to the fig tree and moved on, and the next day is when they seen it had dried up. And went, wow! They, they got wow. And we do the same thing. We see a little a little bit of uh, uh, something happening in the spirit, or you know, we have a, a breakthrough on something. Oh! But you know what? You take a little kid. So many times when we we seen this a lot of times in children's church. We would tell them, uh, come up and pray for somebody. And they come up there and they pray for them. Okay, it's done. Just like as matter of fact. Matter of fact. See, Jesus said here, He said, He said, uh, have faith in God. I believe He was saying, look, guys, it's time for God to get a little faith now. You know, y'all been with me for three years. See, we don't we don't realize He's, he's kind of frustrated with them. Have faith in God. For fairly I say unto you, for, for, for fairly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, it didn't say that if Jesus said, I didn't say if I say, it says that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He said, he said, he said, it's talking about we got to start talking to the mountain. Amen. Now I know y'all heard me talk about this a lot. And you'll probably continue to hear me talk about this a lot. And one of these days, there a light bulb will go off. I mean, it's already went off on a lot of us. Amen. And whenever I'm preaching this, I, I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of it myself. I've learned a lot. Y'all remember a while back when you had to pray over my arm? I was in such pain that night. And I was speaking to my shoulder and telling the pain to leave. And I told her the other day, the pain that I was in that night would have drove most people to the emergency room. Yeah. But I refused to go because I believed that if I was striped on Jesus' back, I'd be healed. And I believe that the devil has nothing on me. Yeah. And he and, 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 and the pain, I believe that the pain and sickness come from him. Yeah. Because God's word says that every good and perfect deal comes down from the Father, and sickness don't come from God. Right. Amen. We pretty much know that here. But you know, so many people, they've been taught this religious stinking thinking that God tries to teach us something with sickness. God tries to teach us something with brokenness. God's trying to teach us something whenever we're going through a time of lack in our finances. And, and so many times, if we are going through a lack in our finances, it's our own fault because we've been We've been uh, 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 not diligent to do what the Holy Spirit was telling us to do. And I know I can I can say that, folks, because I'm 61 years old and I've lived through what I told you the other day. I went through a lot of financial difficulties and I'm still here. Yeah. And we just we just went through a little one right here this last month. But we went through this crunch better than we've ever went through one. I only seen her go to crying up, crying one time the other day. Is it okay with her? Yeah. You know, it wasn't from lack. I know. It was it was an attack on the devil. But crying didn't help, did it? Well, I didn't cry. I didn't cry, cry, but I did get emotional. Yeah. I've been that's, saying I'm a woman of integrity. Yeah. This should not be happening. Yeah. I, was, I was angry at the devil. Yeah. But anyway, what I'm getting at is, and she can tell you, there, there was, in times past, I mean, we've gotten devastated over financial lack in years past. But it's not devastating us anymore because we've got the Word in us and we've grown 
And it's not because we're pastors now, it's because we put the word in our heart. Psalms 119, 105, or maybe it says, May I hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Well, think about it this way. May I hide my word in your heart that I might live a victorious life. May I, let, may I hide your word in my heart that I might live an abundant life. Amen? Because that's where the abundant life is, folks, is in His Word. Right. And we can have it. And abundant life don't mean that you're going to be running over with money, but there ain't nothing wrong with that. Thing. But it does mean what it says. I shall not be in want. I shall not be in lack. I believe that. Yeah, but there's a lot of people in life. Yeah, but bless God, I ain't. But I'm a child of His. And I'm not believing the lie of the devil. Amen. And I believe it's out there for me and I'm going to go get it. Yep. And I'm going to speak. I've been praying every day. I've been telling angels, go out and cause loads to come in to help down there. Called 18 wheeler loads, gooseneck loads, one ton loads, pickup loads. And all I run is one ton and, and, and goosenecks. But I'm calling them all in. Because I want that terminal down there to be blessed. Because, and I believe it is blessed because I work there. Amen. 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 <coughs> but I wanted you to see. I wanted to read that right there because a lot of times that's what's hindering us from living the abundant life is because we're not speaking to our mountains. There's mountains in front of us and we're not speaking to them. And that's what's going to that's what's going to change. That's what's going to change our situation. We got to begin to speak to the mountains. Quit praying to God about them and quit bringing the mountain to God. And, and instead tell the mountain about our God. Yeah. See, David, that's what David did to Goliath. He said, This day shall, shall my God deliver you into my hand. Yeah. Totally different than the rest of the Israelite army was doing. They were looking at, oh my goodness, look at the head on that joker. It covered a football field. Look at the spear he's got. David, he ain't nothing. That joker's uncircumcised. I've got a covenant. He ain't got no covenant. What is he? Yeah. Amen? Amen. Be about like that little boy right there coming over here to Auburn and Auburn standing up. Him telling him, I'm fixing to kill you. <laughs> take your head off. Are you hearing me? That's what that amounted to. Yeah, yeah. Goliath, you know, <laughs> you little worm. But David said, my God's fixing to deliver you in my hands. Yeah. Told me, are you hearing it? He said, God's fixing to give you to me. See, when the devil goes to shout you, what you going to do, he builds it. What you going to do, he builds it. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to believe God. Amen. I'm going to trust Him. And I'm going to wait on Him. And I'm going to listen to Him. And I'm going to listen and do what He says do. And I ain't moving until He says move. Yeah. And I ain't worried about it. Because yeah. He's got it. Yeah, what you going to do? I just told you. Yeah, what you gonna do? I just told you. And after a while, He'll get tired and run off. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet.